Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing remove nth node from end of list. So you're given it the head of a linked list and you want to return the linked list after removing the nth node from the end. So for example, here n equals 2, so you want to remove this node here, that's the second node from the end, and you want to return this list. And then in the second example, you have a one node list and you want to remove that node and return the list so it would be empty. And in the third example, you have one to two and you want to, re you move, you want to remove the last node. So you'd remove that node and then you would return this right here. Okay, so I'm going to briefly describe how to do this. I think this is more of like an easy problem and then we're going to focus on the TypeScript part. So essentially there's two ways. So I'm going to draw this out. So if you have one and we're going to focus on the second way. But they do say they do say there's like a follow up of doing a one pass, but it's not really a one pass, so uh, it's kind of like false, I think. But anyway, so there's two ways to do this. One, you go through this and you get the length, and you also are going to want to make a dummy node for either one of these. So you go through this, you go, you get the length. You start with like a current node here. You go through this until it gets the end. You get a length equals five, let's say, and then you just want to figure out how far you want to go given the length. You want to be at the node right before the node you want to remove. So if you want to remove, want to remove this node, then let's actually add colors. If you want to remove this node here, then we want to be at this node. Because then we can easily remove this node by just saying this, this node's next pointer is this node here, which will get rid of that node. Okay, so the way to do that is if you think about it for this problem, you would need to move three times, right? If you start here, you would need to move three times. So we have a length and we have a n so the number of steps we'd have to move is just length minus n. And we can try this for a few different like solutions, I guess. Like let's say we're trying to remove this node. This node, n would be 3. So then length minus n would be 5 minus 3, and that would be 2. So that would work as well, right? We'd move over here, and then we would be removing. So that's one way you could do it. You get the length, you get that. The other way to do it is you have a fast and a slow pointer. And this is what they'd show you for the follow-up. But it's like I said, it's kind of misleading because it's still the same time complexity and you're still moving to the exact same place. And essentially what happens here is you have your fast pointer start. So also you don't have to check if you are out of bounds in this problem, right? Like n can never be greater than the list. That's one of the constraints they give you. But yeah, so essentially, so if n is two here, you would make your fast pointer start, you would make your fast pointer go up twice. So your fast pointer would actually start here and then your slow pointer would be here. And then you keep moving until your fast pointer is at the end. So the fast pointer would move up three, and then the slow pointer would also move up three. And you are, once again, at the node you want to remove. So you have the slow pointer. OK, so that's essentially how you would do it. And it would work for all your problems, too. You just have your fast pointer move up n times first. And then you move the slow pointer starting. Uh, then you move the slow pointer and the fast pointer until the fast pointer is at the very end. And that's the solution we're going to focus on. And we could try this for some other numbers, right? So let's say n is like 4, and our fast pointer will move up 4 times, so it would start here, and then we were going to move the fast pointer only once for it to get to the end. So the slow pointer would start here, and it would move over here, and the fourth node is from the end is 1, 2, 3, 4. So our slow pointer would be over here, and we're moving this node, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now we, now we have a solution. Now we're going to focus on the TypeScript part, and there is more TypeScript here. So let's actually get rid of some of this uh, so we can see the code better. So they provide you this linked list file. We're just going to actually get rid of this. And we're going to go through this linked list file because this is important for this uh, list node. So you have a class list node. And you have, these are the, um, these are like the, the, the uh, values in the, in the class, essentially. So the list node will have a value and it will have a next. And they are, I think, on default, they're public. You can also make it like private, I believe. I think you do it like this if you want to make them private variables. But I, anyway, so this val is type number and this next is either list node or null. And then this constructor is also a little weird, so let's go through that. So question mark in TypeScript means it's an optional parameter. So essentially what it's saying is you have an optional parameter value, that's a number. And then you have an optional parameter next, that's either a list node or null. And then you say this dot value, because right, that's this thing here, this dot value is value equals undefined let's think about that so if you give an optional parameter the way it works is if it's not provided then it will be undefined right so so if you just call the constructor with no values value will be undefined 
And then if that's true, we're just going to give our value value zero. And if our value was provided, then we're going to give our value whatever was provided. Okay, and same thing for next. If it was not provided, if this was not here, we're going to give it a null. And then otherwise, we're going to take the value that was provided. So that's how that works. So let's actually code up our solution now. So remember, we're going to have a fast pointer and we're going to have a slow pointer and we're also going to have a dummy node. So let's start by making this dummy node and let's see what issues we run into, if any, with TypeScript. And this is also going to be kind of annoying to check. So I'm just going to write a solution. And then once we have no uh, bugs that we can see, we'll just paste it into the code and check there. OK, because it's a linked list, you can't just like write out stuff. You have to write out whole linked list, and I don't want to do that. OK, so what we need to do is we need to make our dummy node. So we can say constant dummy equals we're going to make a new list node. And we're going to give it no no fields, right? Because we don't have to. Like if we don't, it'll just make it the value will be 0 and the next will be null. Actually, we do want to give it a field. So we do want to actually do give it some fields because we want the next node of the dummy to be the head. So we will actually give it. And the way this works, I think, also is like you can't not give it this field and give it this field. So if you do give it this field, you have to give it this first one as well. OK, so we're going to give it a value of 0. And then the next will be head. And there we go. And now that'll work. So now this dummy knows next is the head. Now we're going to create two pointers. So we're going to say let fast equals dummy, slow equals dummy. And here there is a thing we can do. So these nodes, so dummy can be, uh, dummy is of type list node, right? And list nodes have to be type list node. But we actually want fast to be list node or null. So let's try that. So we're going to say it's going to be type list node or null. And then slow is going to be the same thing. Type list node or null. Let's see if we get any errors there. I'm curious. All variables are in use, which is totally fine. But yeah, essentially, because we want, we do want to allow our variables to become null at the end. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to move our fast node until n while n is greater than zero. So let's do that. So we can just say like while n is greater than zero, let's just keep moving our fast node up. So we can say fast equals fast.next. Let's see if we get any errors there. Fast equals. OK, so fast is possibly null. So it's essentially telling us, because it doesn't know that in the lead code constraints, this can't go out of bounds. So you're, you're going to have a problem here, right? If like fast is null, and then you call null.next. Like, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. So we actually need to check if it actually exists. So we have to actually say if fast fast equals fast.next. So that is something TypeScript will tell you. It'll say like, look, you actually have to check for your fast to not be null because it might be null and then null.next would give you an error, right? Okay. So now we have to say while fast.next. And let's see if we have any other errors. Fast is possibly null, so we're gonna have to actually have to check for both of them. So while fast is not null, and fast.next is null, null, not null. Let's just keep moving these nodes up. So let's see what happens here. So if we do slow equals slow.next, you see we also get an error here, the same error as in the fast. So we actually have to like check, is there slow, not null? Because it doesn't know that. So, so TypeScript can't figure out, like, well, your slow is slower than your fast. So like it can't get out of bounds before you're fast. It, it doesn't know that. OK, so if slow, slow equals slow dot next. And then also we could do, I think here we could do fast equals fast dot next because we have our checks above, right? So we're checking here. So we don't have to check again. Okay. And now our slow should be in the right location, hopefully. But yeah, those are like more checks you have to make where in a JavaScript, you can just say like, look, do this. I know it's fine. But in TypeScript, it'll give you these errors and it's good to catch beforehand because then you, you don't have linked list out of bounds errors. Okay, so now our slow should be at the node right before the node we want to delete. So then all we have to do is we have to say slow.next equals slow.next.next, but you're going to see where we should have another error here. So we don't want this. So let's take a look. So slow is possibly null once again. And so we need to actually check for that. Uh, yeah, so we have to say if slow and slow.next. There we go. So now we made all our checks. 
And now finally, we can just return the head. Now, we don't want to return the head because if we're deleting the first node of the list, the first node won't actually exist. So instead, we want to return dummy.next. And we this is fine because even if this is null, we can return a list node or null. Because yeah, like let's say our linked list was like one, two, three, four, five, and we want to delete this. Well, this is our head. So if we're deleting this, First of all, it would be tough to delete. That's why you want the dummy to make it easier to delete, but yeah. Okay, so now hopefully that works. So we're just gonna copy this up and we are going to test it in leak code. Let's do that. Let's see if we have any errors, maybe we do. Well, it looks like we have a uh, Time limit, time limit exceeded, I believe. Yeah, so let's just, so that usually happens when you're not moving your nodes up, so let's just double check that. Yeah, right, so we never, uh, we never decrement n for one thing. Okay, fast. Okay, so let's run that again, see if we have another time limit exceeded. Okay. Okay, so you can see it works, and as far as um, like efficiency, since this is an O of one, this literally just depends on like how many variables you have, so it's not super important. And also, yeah, like the runtime is not super important because it's literally an O of n and O of one function. Okay, so now because yeah, you, you can save some space. Like, I th I think you can save space. You can probably not use a dummy. You can get around using a dummy dummy by checking if n is like the length of your list. You can get you can like get around that and like you can make it a little bit more optimized but it's at the same time and space okay so now let's do the time and space so for the time i'm not going to do a python anymore okay so for the time it is o of n where n is the length of the list because essentially you are going until your slow, fast pointer is all the way at the end and you're going one like one move at a time okay and now for the space it is O of one because we just created this dummy node. We didn't create any other, uh, I guess we created a dummy node and then these are just pointers. So they're not really like nodes, but either way, we only have like two of them. So if our list is a million elements, we still only have these. So this is, t uh, yeah, O of n time and O of one space. And yeah, it's gonna be it for this problem. Once again, I will upload it to the GitHub repo for this problem and I'll link it in the description below. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.